Shweta and uh, welcome you all in today's session for Talk Series uh, 3.3. So uh, uh, today uh, we are talking on a very important topic, which is engaging youths uh, for e-cooking. And uh, just to give a background of why I say that uh, this is an important topic to talk upon. Uh, we have a data which suggests that 16% uh, of uh, global population is aged between 15 to 24 years. And uh, by 2030, which is the target date for the SDGs, this number is projected to grow by 7%. Close to 90% of the world's youth uh, is living in developing countries and bears a disproportionate brunt uh, of cooking with polluting fuels and traditional cook stoves. Uh, the youth of today is uh, our future leaders for tomorrow, and therefore their role in achieving the universal access to clean cooking is critical. It is important for us, uh, all of us here in this room and the larger clean cooking ecosystem to understand uh, you know, the strategies that can drive youth engagement is in this domain and uh, enable them to take leadership roles in advancing clean cooking initiatives uh, worldwide. Uh, I'm today joined by a stellar panel of uh, experts and uh, the idea of putting together this session of today is to understand on uh, the ways in which we can develop uh, uh, you know, strategies and solutions for uh, bringing in more and more youth and engaging them in helping uh, uh, you know, create uh, the cleaner cooking future and also create more opportunities for the youth to participate and uh, in interventions at all levels to accelerate the access of clean cooking. Uh, we will uh, start this discussion of today uh, by uh, having our speakers' uh, presentations. So we have two speakers who are going to give their, uh, uh, you know, key points about this uh, topic for today. And then we are going to move forward with the second part of today's session, which is a panel discussion on the same topic. Uh, but before we do that, I will take a couple of minutes for all those who have joined us today for the first time in talk series to give a quick background about this initiative and the initiative of MEX program in India. Uh, so moving forward, uh, MEX program, Modern Energy Cooking Services program is a global research program. It is UK aid FCDO funded program. And it's led globally by uh, Lagparu University, U UK. Uh, the program aims to accelerate the access of uh, modern energy-based clean cooking globally. The research under the program suggests, uh, you know, works on an array of technologies, but there's a clear evidence which uh, points to the viability of electric cooking. Uh, using uh, uh, efficient cooking devices. Uh, in India, the activities of this program are managed by the in-country partner, uh, Finovista, and uh, we are engaging in an array of activities within India under multiple strands of working and shaping up policy in terms of driving uh, entrepreneurship and uh, manufacturer base in the country consumer awareness and, um, uh, you know, adoption of uh, modern energy based clean cooking and uh, last but not the least, uh, uh, you know, accelerating the access to finance uh, for the sector. Uh, so moving forward, the, uh, uh, the session that we are today in is a part of uh, talk series. It's a global platform that uh, has uh, increased its reach uh, over the period of years. We are currently in the third phase. We've successfully concluded uh, two such phases with 12 session E's and uh, happy to say that it's, uh, I would say it's a growing tribe of ecosystem players who 
sessions on a regular basis and there's growing interest in talking on topics which are critical to enable uh, the transition to modern energy based cooking and uh, i've already mentioned that we've successfully concluded two phases and we are already on the third phase and uh, um, this about coming talk series which is going to be happening in the month of january so i'll stop here and uh, uh, I would invite our first speaker for today, uh, Mr. Abhishek Sharma. He is the Joint Director of Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Uh, with a wide experience of 14 years, Mr. Abhishek Sharma is, uh, 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 has been associated with Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Management Center earlier. And I would request uh, Mr. Abhishek to give his uh, uh, you know, points and ideas with respect to this topic and uh, share how we can take things further on this. Yeah. Mm, thank you, Madam. A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, MECS and Finovista for inviting me for this lively topic on engaging youth for e-cooking. With uh, around 66% of the population below the age of 35, India is the world largest having the world largest youth population right now. India is home to around one fifth of the world's youth population. The large youth population offers an opportunity and as well as a market uh, to explore. Youth are, as we all know, very vital for the progress and success for, for any community. They are the working force for a community. As a matter of fact, most of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal SDGs focuses on youth programs, identify them as a crucial national demographic and highlighting the importance of these programs. And uh, at the climate and energy front, uh, we have nations worldwide that are slowly moving towards net zero targets. India, through its uh, Pancham Red targets in the recent COP26, have set the agenda for achieving this target by the year 2070. Energy transition and energy efficiency thus hold a major potential for meeting this goal of net zero along with the target of renewable. Under the broader scheme of climate, electric cooking technology is becoming a major new area for investment and employment for the youths and a dynamic arena for international collaboration as well. The government of India has entrusted Bureau of Energy Efficiency that is under Ministry of Power to promote adoption of e-cooking through Go Electric campaign. States have an important role to play. We have 36 SDAs spread across all over the country, and uh, uh, we are promoting the e-cooking through these states. We are undertaking various demonstration projects in rural as well as urban areas. As a matter of the fact, again, uh, the states like Meghalaya, Pondicherry, Ladakh, Kerala are doing a very active participation in e-cooking programs. States are striving to propagate e-cooking in hospitals, railway canteens, uh, defense canteens, where we have 24 into 7 cooking programs, anganwadis, and moreover government office buildings to propagate the message of e-cooking. And now coming to the topic today of engaging youth for e-cooking. Youth has a huge potential to play an active role in the energy transition, but the main challenge is how to create or ch channelize their energy, inspire youth to work collaboratively for this program, direct involvement of youth in energy transition process uh, uh, will offer several opportunities for them. It provides an opportunity of employment, economic opportunities, uh, easy, of affordable access to the energy. This potential of energy transition underlines the importance of engaging youth in the policy development. And we need to provide a right platform to these youths and to channelize their energy at national, sub-national level and to encourage them. Such platform will help them in raising their voice, in influencing the policy makers, the government, and the various other policy makers and other stakeholders. Many parts of the world are, are now experiencing such level of youth participation to promote e-cooking and experimenting with new ways to involve youth in this good endeavor. 
some notable examples that i want to quote right now italy has organized the youth for climate driving ambition summit where the young people across the world gather to discuss topics and contribute and uh, discuss their contribution to cop 26 negotiations the united secretary general has established a youth advisory group on the climate change to ensure active participation in that debate the global youth energy outlook is the first youth led research project to engage more than 30000 young people in denmark we have youth climate councils on similar lines it is now the high time and we in india to take the lead in this regard and develop <coughs> such platform for interaction among youth so that india can be become a power superpower in this e cooking program with this words i thank you and uh, the forum is open for the further discussions and observation and comments of other panelists thank you madam thank you abhishek ji for uh, setting up uh, today's session and also highlighting uh, the important role that we is playing along with its sdas in energizing the e cooking uh, penetration in india uh with this i'll uh, move forward uh, to our next speaker uh ms cherop soy uh, she is the sdg 7 global ambassador for youth at sc for all representing the pan african region her blog embodies her efforts to raise awareness of the climate knowledge gaps within her society and the world and the title of the blog is eco warrior kenya she is particularly keen on emission reductions as reflected in her past and present role with a focus on energy sector and believes that achieving a net zero future requires climate ambitions from all fronts um i would request uh, ms soy to uh, please take it forward and share your views uh, on the topic Thank you very much. Um I would first like to say that I'm privileged to be among this panel and this is a topic that doesn't get much highlight or spotlight when it comes to the energy sector and youth participation. So I would like to thank you for deciding to carve out um a a, a topic for us to discuss this afternoon. As you had said in your opening address um and you laid the statistics it's very clear that youth engagement is going to be a uh, a potential and going to be a force that will be embedded into the actualization of universal energy access and within this sector given that youth are equipped with the right tools to navigate their efforts here because i would say as a global youth ambassador the interest from young people is very much present there are so many young entrepreneurs in the energy space there are so many young advocates there are so many young um aspiring policy makers within the energy space that only need that one platform to take them to the next level and these are people you might see there either in universities some are in their early career professionals and they would really are interested in making a change and doing more than what they are currently doing so definitely the interest is there and there are there are recurring gaps that have been faced throughout the years that i think we moving on we need to address as we go along in 2024 especially within the e cooking sp space so i would say as a reflection of my own personal background it is 2023 we are about to wind up the year and cooking over an open flame is still a reality for many including my own community and my motivation to make positive changes and progression in the clean cooking comes from being a part of the statistic that we always quote every time we want to um start drafting a paper or when we're making our opening addresses but to leave that reality it hits different so being that statistic that lacks access to clean technology has been my push to being an ambassador and being an advocate not just in my professional work but also in my personal work at the community level from a professional standpoint it has always puzzled i have always been puzzled as to why clean cooking is not always embedded or treated as an energy access priority for many countries despite millions of people lacking access to it and from many dying from the associated health complications that come about from it so i believe that 
almost all sustainable development goals are anchored on energy access from health to education to economic progression to combating climate change and by far clean cooking is at the center and the critical piece to actualizing universal energy access and not only that but also to being part of the global emission abatement puzzle that requires urgent action by all stakeholders and by all stakeholders that means including young people because they are also part of the process and part of of this um, process and so moving ahead i'm really thrilled to have this discussion and i will center my I would say my interventions throughout this session um, among some key topics. I would want to touch on mentorship and its importance, as well as creating that enabling environment specifically for youth energy entrepreneurs in the e-cooking space. And finally, I would like to focus also on capacity building and, and its positive influences in driving this conversation forward. So thank you and back to you, Shital. Uh, so thanks, uh, uh, Ms. Soy. Um, I would uh, actually now uh, invite your comments when we start uh, the panel discussion, which is the next session, and uh, invite you also for your comments and the three things that you uh, really highlighted that you would like to share some of your viewpoints around uh, that. Um, I would now uh, move forward with uh, our uh, second session, which is uh, the panel discussion and for which I will uh, be uh, inviting the panelists uh, for today. So we have for this session, uh, Dr. Nitin K. Lab Sefer. He is the chief scientist and head CSIR uh, NIDI and um, uh, his one of the areas of specialization includes clean and energy generation included in rural cooking uh, energy hydrogen and cleaner combustion including improved cook stoves and rural indoor air pollution control and uh, uh, needless to say that uh, uh, dr nitin has published uh, several uh, papers uh, in reputed journal and he's also the fellow of international society for energy environment and sustainability and member of several prestigious society bodies uh, i would request uh, dr nitin to please uh, uh, unmute yourself and uh, share your key points on the strategies uh, that you think are important to drive youth engagement in the sector of clean cooking and your vast experience will help us understand this subject more. Okay, uh, good afternoon. It's indeed a pleasure to be here. And uh, at the outset, let me compliment and rather congratulate uh, Finalista for their untiring efforts in promoting uh, clean cooking and in particular e-cooking. Well, uh, I would uh, start with uh, reminding what Mr. Sharma B. W. mentioned, that uh, any energy transition takes time and efforts, and it's more challenging when we have to deal with the, you know, like directly with the users or customers. Uh, the second is uh, we need to achieve a just transition in this country, in India, and cooking energy, I believe, is one of the very good options wherein these kind of efforts will help us attaining just transition in addition to uh, the energy transition. So I personally believe that uh, one of the barriers in uh, promotion of uh, e-cooking or for that matter, any clean cooking option is uh, lack of consumer awareness and uh, preferences uh, for traditional customs of cooking, what we typically call is uh, adoption related challenges, wherein yes, I do believe that the youth can play effective role. So I would rather prefer to categorize based on my experience in the rural sector that I categorize the two sets of youth by their age. One is around say 14 to 18 when they're mostly like students and their kids in fact. And the other are like 18 plus or 20 plus up to 30 wherein their interest could be as an entrepreneur because most of them are working. So first group of actually students or children most of them, uh, especially the girls, uh, they are intensely involved in cooking and even collecting the firewood. So they are uh, basically a sufferer of these impacts like smoke or drudgery 
the time they have to waste and other risk of traditional cooking. So with a bit of a training, they can be effectively involved in awareness of, uh, you know, like the solid fuel cooking or traditional cooking impacts. And our experience with uh, many villages, I would say, uh, we organized some poster competition to make them aware and they took this to their house. And later on, they, they came with the idea that, yes, uh, it was related to water. So they said, yes, our parents want to clean water. Similar thing can happen with the uh, cooking or clean cooking. Uh, we sometimes arranged uh, interactive sessions in uh, school wherein uh, we got quite a good response, even in the tribal areas, to tell you frankly, like I worked in the Khandwa tribal area and Lodhwa and Gujarat and many other tribal areas. Well, for working youth, uh, we should sensitize them about daily like disability adjusted life years lost and the economic losses incurred due to health impact, the time wasted for them uh, by them in the uh, cooking process. And uh, you may be surprised that even the rural folks are nowadays quite sensitive about the time they spend, especially in the morning when they want to go to the field. So these kind of uh, devices will be very useful once uh, they adopt this. Uh, very quick point, few more like next, uh, I feel that we should take advantage of uh, PMUI initiatives. Because once you introduce a clean cooking, the job to uh, make them aware of clean cooking is already done at almost at the national level. So we should introduce like e-cooking as a next level. And this has got some uh, specific advantages. And now most of the dishes can be cooked using uh, e-cooking. And I personally feel that uh, the areas wherein they use rice and lentils, like dal and chawal, are the best to introduce because it can be done with the e-cooking uh, or electric uh, cooker. And once there is a sufficient mass, they themselves will promote the e-cooking. So, uh, and with the youth, I found that instead of asking them to uh, participate much in the awareness program, if you tell them that it is a training of trainers and they become your ambassadors. Uh, about the opportunities, uh, again, I would thank uh, Mr. Sharma to explain what, uh, what are the opportunities uh, for them. Uh, I personally worked with uh, some school and colleges, uh, especially like NSS program wherein uh, they can be trained and they are happy to take up these kind of a work. Many colleges, including engineering colleges, the students can go to the uh, field. And also I checked that there are schemes like the New Generation Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development Center, wherein they uh, provide the uh, training. So uh, we can also think about uh, introducing cooking energy impacts in the school activities, if not in the curricula. Because quite often I found that uh, now the students or people are aware of climate change and global warming, but they are not aware that this is one of the causes of that. In addition to that, this is having a huge health impact. I mean, the direct uh, uh, kind of a damage to them. So we need to sensitize through schools and education department for which uh, I would say BWE or Phenomistar, we all together can approach some education department and try to introduce that, like you have introduced water pollution, air pollution, so please introduce about harm of solid fuel cooking. So I'll uh, stop here and uh, look forward for more discussion. And in fact, to be frank, working with you all. Thank you, Dr. Nitin. And I think it's uh, rightly said that uh, in schools and colleges nowadays, the idea of uh, uh, you know uh, promoting awareness towards climate action is very prominent but somewhere uh, the focus on clean cooking is something which uh, like is not there and uh, it's uh, i really like the way you've tried and uh, uh, elaborated on integrating the entire knowledge space for schools communities and creating action in the rural areas. And I'm sure Abhishek ji is also listening to us and uh, we would uh, uh, come up with uh, strong action on this. Uh, I would like to now move forward and take views from our next panelist, Dr. Manju Ma'am. Uh, she is the principal director at NPTI, National Power Training Institute. Uh, Ma'am holds a degree in Bachelor's of Engineering in Electronics and Communications, uh, MS in Software Systems, MBA in HR and Doctorate degree with specialization in GIS and RS and holds a 33 years of experience in the field of training and teaching 
at various positions in NPTI, and uh, she was also the program director of the very prestigious two-year MBA program in power management at NPTI. Uh, Ma'am, I would like you to unmute yourself and share your views on this topic and the ideas of how we can drive youth engagement in the cooking sector. Thank you, ma'am. Um, and uh, let me first compliment you for uh, holding this third session of the talk series, uh, which is, I suppose, the phase three. And uh, we are talking about transitioning to modern energy for cooking. And uh, the main focus is on engaging youth for e-cooking. E yes, definitely. Our My earlier speakers have uh, laid a lot of emphasis on how to, you know, reach out to the youth and what percentage of youth is there who would be really engaged in such activities and in promoting the e-cooking. Uh, now, as has already been mentioned, the, the thing is that we need, we're going towards energy transition. And when we are talking about energy transitions, then it becomes very imperative that uh, we are going to a new phase. And it is very important for us to uh, touch at the grassroots levels, that is at the school level. So such promotion has to be done at the school level in, in our educational yeah. curriculum itself. These things need to be incorporated so that people or children, our, as they grow, you know, in the next few years, they would be adults like uh, and maybe coming in the age group of 15 to 24. So we need to educate them at that level. Uh, so so that you know they when they are choosing a career they would keep this in mind that whatever they are doing has to be sustainable has to be taken care of, the environment has to be taken care of we need to think about ahead about the other generations so a lot of so when we are making strategies we need to um, you know think as to who we are planning to reach out to who would be the people uh, school, maybe colleges or uh, which level of, uh, you know, people and why are they important? They're important because they would be the brand, the ambassadors later on in propagating this information to their, uh, you know, family members also. Through them only this message is going to reach out to the family members. And um, what do we uh, envisage from all these things? So um, I, these days, you know, uh, nobody hesitates in going to the kitchen, be it boys or girls. I mean, it's not just limited to just girls. Boys also want to try out a lot of dishes, a lot of, you know, uh, menus that they have not uh, even thought of. And uh, they want to join in such activities. So I, I don't think, I mean, it is gender kind of, you know, uh, limited to a gen, any particular gender. So we need to propagate this and uh, obviously tell them and emphasize uh, as to uh, not only this, we also have to bring in the policy makers, the entrepreneurs, you know, some entrepreneurs and investors also need to be involved in these activities so that they need to tell the children who, who would be at that age, say, uh, somebody who will be passing out from the college. Now, if he wants to be become an entrepreneur, the investor, he should be knowing who the investor would be if I want to invest or want to go in this field of, say, um, you know, clean cooking. So who would be the investors who can uh, provide uh, investment for my project? So who are the donors or maybe who would be the key partners? So this kind of uh, uh, information should be available to him handy. Um, and also what I think is that we need to do a lot of publicity, not only um, uh, advertising through banners or, you know, doing talk shows on radios. Uh, we need to do more such marketing uh, so that, you know, the messages, message reaches out to a lot of people who are there. So this is what I feel uh, because this has to be youth led and uh, lot of uh, challenges are there uh, you also know like a uh, lot of dependency on the conventional fuels is still there so this message has to go down deeper into the rural areas also yeah 
Thank you, ma'am, for uh, sharing your uh, remarks on this. And um, I will come back to you uh, with uh, a set of, um, I think, queries of, you know, which I think you could answer on this. And with this, I'll move forward to Dr. Rudhadeep uh, Majumdar. Uh, he is the Assistant Professor for Energy, Environment and Climate Change Program, EECP, at NIAS National Institute of Advanced Studies. Uh, Dr. Rudhadeep um, uh, ha has a doctorate in nuclear energy from North Carolina State University in USA and an MTech in nuclear engineering from IIT Kanpur. Before joining NIAS, he's worked as an institute uh, postdoctoral fellow at IIT Bombay and postdoctoral research assistant at uh, North Carolina State University. Um, his research interest centers around sustainability, encompassing renewable and clean energy, nuclear and plasma fusion energy, industrial applications of plasma, and analysis of energy efficient sustainable system. And uh, uh, it's interesting, uh, Professor Ruzadeep is also currently working with um, uh, MEX on a very important research-led uh, project. I would uh, invite your comments, uh, Dr. Ruzadeep. You have already been uh, engaging a lot of youth in your uh, yes. program and initiatives, so would like you to share your comments. Yeah. Thank you, Sheetal. First of all, I will uh, like to congratulate you because you are a young entrepreneur who is engaged in uh, uh, clean cooking sector and you are a woman entrepreneur, which is also very attractive to drive further initiatives. And you have been uh, personally a great motivator and a friend. And uh, uh, with this, I will start. Uh, first, uh, Abhishek ji, Nitin ji, Manju ma'am and Ms. Uh, uh, so uh, whatever you told is absolutely brilliant. You have laid the foundation. I was actually uh, virtually scrambling through my hair that what I will speak, but I have been a teacher. So I am engaging with different age groups with Nitin the very nicely told that all of the age group people are not identical. So the roles that they are going to play, they are going to be very, very different. Uh, the age group that is in the 14 or maybe uh, the teenagers will have a different role and the 20 plus who will go into the profession, they will have a different role. I personally am engaging with PhD students with 20 mid twenties, early mid twenties and the masters uh, and the undergrad students from the neighborhood colleges. So before going into uh, the thick of uh, what I think should be done or where the gaps are, I'll just take the example that, uh, see uh, uh, Abhishek ji very nicely took the example of Italy but in India, we always uh, give it to the advanced countries that they can do a lot of things we cannot do. So let us be little chilled out, uh, complacent. But you have to also see that like to like uh, countries, South Saharan Africa, the Clean Cooking Alliance and uh, the Student Energy, they held this October 2022 meeting where 70% of the delegation was youth. youth. And uh, among this uh, delegation, 50% was uh, a young woman. So this kind of progressive thing are always happening. And in India, although the enthusiasts are all over the place, I think that is individual enthusiasm. We need to now conglomerate. So that is one of the big thing that we need to get things together in a professional manner rather than doing it is a also thing that yeah, in, in part time, I also voice for this clean cooking, but in main time, I do something else. So we need full timers, full timers, young professionals working for the advocacy of clean cooking. That is a big gap. Then also you all of you are aware that UN Habitat Initiative, they have a short term training program for the youth, for the resource energy efficiency and the renewable energy take up. So very brilliant, brilliant initiative. But in India, you know, you have a social hierarchy which needs to be uh, actually broken, you need the youth to be hard. So who will play the role of the icebreaker? I have seen my interns going to the field and the moment they start talking about anything away from the solid biomass or in some cases LPG cooking, they are shown the doors. So if the ice breaking does not happen, the first discussion does not happen. So the changes that you can impact happens after you have the opportunity to discuss. So somebody has to do the ice breaking. Social hierarchy does not allow 
the young voices to be heard always third point the training course materials that un habitat and many other organizations they impart their short term training courses as manju ma'am was very brilliantly telling that it has to be embedded in the educational uh, programs i go one step further ma'am it has to be made a mandatory coursework in the degree oriented program otherwise again people will just take it outside and they will read only which gives them job so after the uh, now i'll coming uh, be coming to nitin sir's comment the young people will be uh, going through the degree after the degree if they have a cooking course what they do they should have operational training courses for different types of electric cooking appliances where they can demonstrate the cooking and also they should know that how to service and repair so we need the skilled man force a generation is going away we need the repairing shops who will repair components may be there but someone has to put in uh, this uh, components and then also you need active youth groups to be uh, uh, disseminating the scientific content which is written in easy to understand language regarding the benefits of electric cooking devices because i found then many people within the bengaluru municipal town area they believe that electric cooking is hazardous for health i am telling you telling only a two week old experience people think that electric cooking is bad for health and the device is also very dangerous to deal with this is the view point we are having active myth bursting needs to be pursued to remove the widely prevalent misconception this is not in uh, uh, in complementary or in lieu of the scientific content uh, dis uh, the dissemination it has to be in parallel you teach people what is right but also debunk the uh, what is wrong regarding the device uh, devices regarding the vessels regarding the safety standards you have to debunk a lot of myths finally I, there are three more challenges we uh, also heard this cooking discussion but we like the kejriwals uh, mohalla clinics we should have mohalla based cooking clinics where periodically once in a week or twice a week there should be thought churning among the young people involving some of the uh, uh, older women who are also the community like uh, who has a saying in the community level so that uh, this uh, this social gathering are the breeding place of the clean cooking uh, and the thought churning of its far reaching impacts because the number of youth that will be free for this kind of activity may be less but if they germinate the seed of thought to some more people who are actually using the devices possibly women gatherings will uh, gain much more wind the seed will come from the young people the knowledge seed but it germinates and manifests uh, among the uh, in the in the gatherings of the older women or the house uh, house uh, wives and the people who are engaged in cooking even the domestic helps and maids they can have the, uh, the uh, a share in this because they also need to be educated they also form a important uh, strata of the socio economic group of our society and behavioral traits are very rigid and cultural roots are overpowering so the road is going to be challenging and in a especially in a city like mumbai in a city like delhi in a city like chennai bengaluru the culinary and behavioral diversity will be there because people come from all sorts of places so standardization in terms of intervention is not very simple some people may want something other people's requirement may be very different and you have to be prepared with all the answers and for that actually sheetal engaged me with this study that where the diversity component actually will be unfold, uh, unfolded and we can be prepared with some more answers with the unknown unknowns so with this uh, point of uh, worries and discussion i'll end it here i think that i could add some value to the eminent uh, panel of speakers uh, i again thank uh, mecs finovista and my co panelists that you have come together to uh, brainstorm over such a important topic to take it forward to the next generation thank you very much all thank you professor rudeep and i think uh, apart from uh, highlighting the strategies uh, with respect to engaging youth you've also highlighted the challenges and the overall challenges to transitioning to e cooking uh, 
Uh, I would request Ms. Soi now to uh, please share her uh, points with respect to capacity building and other areas that uh, she highlighted in her opening remark. And I will also request you to share with us some, uh, uh, you know, you've been part of multiple initiatives for engaging youth and as a global ambassador uh, uh, for youth, uh, under climate action, uh, I would like you to also share with us some global uh, best practices or initiatives that you would like to highlight uh, over here, apart from the points that uh, you wanted to elaborate. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I'm really pleased that each and every single panelist has mentioned education. And when you talk about capacity building, I think the essence and the foundation is founded on education. And the panelists have touched on different angles. I've had education for consumer awareness, and I've seen, I've also had the angle on education for youth to understand their position and how they are affected by these challenges surrounding e-cooking and also um, the energy sector as well as climate change. But for me, the education for me, I understand um, my I feel very strongly about education is educating not only young people, yes, um, within the school curriculum to understand climate education and the energy sector and how they're all interlinked and embedding that with the different disciplines that they're in, whether it be accounting, medicine, um, engineering, and how they can all be a part of the energy transition but also to be education so that in such a way that as young people we are able to educate others. So this means um, if we have, if we're talking about, let's say transition for the transition in the energy sector, that means for us to transition, first of all, before we get even to e-cooking, we have to have energy access in our homes in order to power up these electric cooking appliances. So what does careers in this um, moving at scale for different disciplines to enable that we as a country and as developing countries, we have access to electricity first, and then we can have the discussion on electric cooking and having this all um, exist in a plane that is happening sustainably. So when it comes to platforms that facilitate youth-driven climate ac um, action for clean cooking in our countries, I will start with where I'm at, um, with sustainable energy for all. We do have internships open for early career professionals, and we do have clean cooking internships that are on a rolling basis. So that means the intern will be attached to a specific office and together with um, with a, with a team of clean cooking experts, they'll be able to raise ambition and help governments recognize the benefits and co-benefits of clean cooking access. And also um, with a big component of having data and providing that data to drive the planning and investment required in the scalable solutions. As uh, for the ambassador program, my role entirely is based on advocacy. So that means it's breaking down the complex terms that are used within the energy and clean cooking sector and having that into palatable terms that can be accessed or easily accessible to someone who's young or audiences who are not familiar with the terms and with the sector. So we throw out all the jargon out the window and we have a normal ordinary conversation that is easy to understand easy to follow i mean we're talking about cooking we're talking about food food in in our culture in african culture is to bring people together it's um it's 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 just a, a, an important aspect of our cultural norms so with the ambassador program and um, through my blog at the eco warrior kenya i have different articles and also use my social media platforms to advocate for clean cooking technologies and someone spoke about consumer awareness. Um, I talk about this a lot um, when I when I reflect back on my professional journey when I was a ministry at uh, the I was an intern at my ministry. That's the Ministry of Energy in Kenya, and I was attached to the clean cooking unit. And we had this challenge that we um, had a project that enrolled um, clean cooking um, stoves to a rural community. 
And one year later, when we came back to assess the project, we realized that there was a missing link. We had done everything. We delivered the cook stoves. We have raised the money. We have brought together the different partners to deliver the project. But we had missed a big component on consumer awareness. So the ladies um, at, the, at the local village were telling us that um, they didn't utilize the stoves as much because they didn't want the stoves to be used when they were not in the house. So if they were not the ones supervising, they wouldn't um, they wouldn't have their children or their help to be able to power the cooking stoves. And then there was this other um, majority, like a, a split 50-50. They said with the electric cooking, um, there are some meals that we have in our communities that we cannot cook with an electric cooker because we know the open flame is the best. It brings out the flavor. It brings out the char and like it's the soul food. So then we realize that's a missing component. And I think with young people, we are able to bridge those gaps because we are caught in the middle. We are part of these communities and we are also educated. And I think we have the language and we have the the tax to, to, to bridge and, and st streamline the fine prints. I would now like to highlight um, some of the initiatives that have been crucial in my journey, especially specifically focusing on clean cooking. And I'm happy that someone had mentioned student energy. So student energy is a youth led um, organization of young people who are advocating for advancements in the energy sector um, at all strands. And they do have this fellowship program that I joined when I wanted to take my blog and my writing to the next level. So I wanted it to be not just for entertainment purposes, but also to have the right statistics, um, to have the right backing. And because sometimes um, portals, you have to pay money to have access to some data when you're doing your research. And so I joined the Student Energy Fellowship to navigate those. And um, throughout my fellowship, I was initially, I went in um, trying to assess how agriculture um, and the energy sector, like why renewables were not being in integrated within the agriculture sector in my community in Kenya. But when you talk about agriculture, you talk about food. And when you talk about food, you talk about clean cooking and electric cooking. And so um, it just so happened that I sparked this interest on clean cooking. And um, one of the benefits that I, I, I was fortunate enough to experience was um, to attend the Clean Cooking Alliance Forum that happens every two years, I believe, in, in Ghana. And within this um, Clean Cooking Alliance, I was able to join the Clean Cooking Alliance Youth Program, and they have a youth strategy that is centered around three key points on raising awareness, um, empowerment, and action by youth. So they have a program, separate program, when it comes to action that really um, helps businesses by young people in clean cooking to become ready to take up on different um, challenges that they're going about. So there is um, uh, there is a lot of support that is starting to come in and that I am seeing that is on the rise. And there is the interest from young people, as I mentioned. So I think um, for more, it's just the reinforcement and, and making sure that we have, we understand the needs of the young people, especially, and come in with a capacity building elements and bridge and marry these together so that we are able to carry um, and to cover more groundwork. Yes, um, back to you, Shital. Thank you, uh, Ms. Soe, for sharing those points. And I, uh, I picked up on the aspect of uh, platforms, the forums that you have mentioned and uh, the great initiatives. And I would uh, uh, come back to Dr. Nitin now, and uh, I would request uh, Dr. Nitin uh, that um, uh, Ms. Soe just shared uh, an aspect about creating innovative platforms, like she mentioned about the Clean Cooking Alliance. Uh, that actually helps in uh, integrating more and more youth engagement. Um, I would like to understand more upon this uh, from you, Dr. Nitin, that, you know, what can be the innovative platforms uh, in India and globally that can be developed 
uh, which focus not only upon the climate action generally, but specifically on um, on clean cooking. And you also mentioned that uh, uh, how it is important to uh, you know integrate the entire aspect of clean cooking within the larger aspect of transitioning to a cleaner and sustainable future. And um, uh, you know what can be good examples of um, uh, driving more and more, uh, I would say, interest from youth to pick up such streams, uh, uh, you know, uh, not only in their study domain, but you know, when they move out into picking up jobs and uh, careers for themselves. Yeah. Well. Uh... Frankly speaking, I'm not an expert in this uh, domain of uh, you know, like uh, HR, but uh, based on my experience, yes, youth are smart. Of course, I would uh, slightly concern about uh, promoting in any world and our world. And in India also, I personally consider then again, there are like different uh, uh, economic uh, levels. And uh, sometimes we target those who are at the bottom of economic pyramid. Okay? So, there are things. One is an entrepreneur. Yes. Uh, we, yeah. I see a very good opportunity, uh, not only for the sales and uh, especially the O&M of uh, e, e cooking sector, because uh, we are talking about close to uh, 1.4 billion uh, like people. And e-cooking uh, has one advantage that uh, we are not restricting promotion of e-cooking to, you know, like a rural sector, okay? E-cooking will be very well rather adopted in the urban sector. So those entrepreneurs, they will not distinguish between a rural and the urban market. They will go by the huge opportunity, market opportunity available. So they will cater to the need of uh, both, okay? Here, I'd like to quote one example of, say, water purification devices. So any market in rural sector is a very sensitive market, okay? So water purifier did not do so well in uh, rural because of the affordability issue and the other problems. But uh, I see that uh, with the LPG, like PMUI uh, penetration, their affordability is increasing, okay? And uh, once uh, uh, we have like uh, 24 by seven, uh, electric things and the way we are promoting, especially the solar, sometimes they see that uh, along with the e-cooker, there is coming a solar panel, okay? So there are two kinds of entrepreneur I see and I interacted with. One is those who are promoting e-cooking, okay? So they are dedicated for e-cooking. There are groups who are into DRE sector, wherein they feel that they should promote both the solar electrification of individual houses along with the cooking device. So both these things uh, have got a lot of promotional scheme from the government. The one more thing probably we can do from Finovista and uh, like our community that to make the rural folks aware of different scheme and also to help them uh, getting benefits of these schemes. And uh, I'm sure the kind of a skilling programs are there. We should introduce these kind of a skilling program for the maintenance of e-cooking and uh, you know, like uh, or demonstration or installation, which is of course easy, but skilling programs are like green skill programs are there, but it needs to be more popularized among the rural folks or in the town. Uh, Where in some in some states I found they are doing well, but uh, the penetration is yet to be happening in the most vulnerable sector. I would say a vulnerable part of the country wherein. Um, the, as per the NHFS data, there are like Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh where the rural population, a very significant number are still using the solid fuels. So how to uh, promote these kind of uh, schemes in these states wherein solid cooking is still prevalent predominantly uh, should be my take. In fact. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nathan. Uh, I would uh, uh, now request uh, Manju ma'am that uh, MPTI is uh, engaged in training young uh, power professionals. Uh, Discoms have an excellent consumer connect 
and uh, we've heard from our panelists that uh, awareness bursting myth of consumers and um, uh, you know can actually lead to uh, enable the transition or i would say increase the adoption at the consumer level and i think also proves to be a good opportunity to engage the young professionals in this segment so uh, i would like to hear your thoughts uh, upon that uh yes uh ma'am uh, you have rightly mentioned about uh, npti um just for the sake of the audience like npti is a an apex body under ministry of power and uh, we have been uh, in the training and human resource development area for the past more than 50 years and uh, uh, we have been conducting uh, short term medium term long term training programs uh, for the uh, discoms so be it uh, generators or be it transmission companies and now the focus is on renewable energy companies and uh, we as mr nitin has already mentioned we are also conducted when the uh, solar installation was at its boom and we we had also conducted entrepreneurship programs for setting up renewable energy you know uh, uh, plants so we did that also and it was in in fact uh, uh, through this um, uh, new and renewable energy ministry that such programs were initiated so um, that that did create a lot of you know awareness and a lot of entrepreneurs wanted to get into this business and now also you've seen that lot there are a lot of companies who are already you know uh, providing your your panels and other accessories related to the renewable energy so as uh, in a similar manner i think uh, we also need to create awareness among or create entrepreneurs uh for this kind of you um, uh, you this kind of you know uh, clean cooking uh, mechanisms clean cooking devices so uh, and not only like entrepreneurs also those people who can later on like uh, you have a mobile repair person you are skilling him to get the mobiles repaired and you will find shops all over so sim in a similar manner you also need to create or skill manpower for those things also uh for uh, you know repairing devices or equipment that are related to clean cooking so um awareness programs can be conducted we can also do that in npti through npti that uh, we can create awareness uh, related to um, clean cooking uh, mechanisms and the things that are there already available as we are already uh doing uh, courses on renewable energy also short term medium term and in fact a uh, post graduate diploma course also is being run by npti uh for setting up you know uh, renewable energy so that that way i mean uh, um that that is a good idea that such more such awareness programs entrepreneur programs can be conducted which can be i i think you know sponsored by some agency so that more youth can come for this kind of entrepreneurship programs like what was done by mnri earlier yes yeah and i think that's uh, going to be really an excellent opportunity because um, uh, that can actually help them uh, think about their careers long term and also create meaningful impact uh, you know in the society uh, thank you ma'am uh, for sharing your comments and uh, professor rudeep uh, before we close the session for today uh, i would uh, uh, invite you to share like one or two recommendations on you know uh, the strategies that can uh, uh, be developed with respect to actually uh uh getting more and more interest of people to look at careers in this segment to look at research in this segment and uh, uh, not only from uh, you know a uh, uh, point of creating consumer awareness and busting the myths but we all agree that uh, interventions at multiple levels is required and as a youth you think about multiple streams of careers and as a researcher also so you know what can really drive interest of young people in this sector so 
one or two good recommendations on uh, this aspect will yeah uh, thank you sheetal you have touched upon the one very very important point the which i am dealing with because when i give uh, this kind of task uh to this young people they the first question they ask uh, sir what will i get after i finish uh, this task so that cannot be only one uh, recommendation letter in my letter head and uh, the remuneration for the work they do no not uh, that has to be something bigger than this so uh, you have to now uh, as you are uh, 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 like uh, one of the front running proponents and entrepreneurs please uh, try to scout for people and also inform us that where are the job opportunities for this uh, young talents provided they are educated with this uh, cooking knowledge and some some people and if you can include this cooking device appliance servicing and maintenance in the iti training because iti vocational training they give low tension uh, line trainings and high tension light trainings so certificate uh, like certified uh, this service and repairing training for from the uh, government uh, funded iti institutes and even private funded uh, this training sessions will be one major recommendation and please consolidate a database where these people can be recruited because i actually do not have an answer that beyond the five top people out of the 20 i am dealing with where they will be placed so there only the front cream de la cream is placed and other has to uh, go where uh, go astray that will not be very attractive option for an emerging field emerging field should come up with a lot of job opportunities and if somebody is good in hr and the writing skill they should have one kind of job if somebody is good at hands on uh, skill with the devices and the demonstration part they should have a job uh, of different kind but we need to know where the jobs are so until and unless that clarity comes it will be very difficult and uh, difficult to motivate the youth another point i would like to mention to all the dignitaries that government is making promises of free electricity and a lot of the electric cooking eagerness or adoption eagerness is contingent upon this free electricity people tell that if we get electricity for free and we don't have to pay anything extra then it is okay we can try the moment we have to pay for electricity we do not want this cooking device so this kind of trend tendency tells that this subsidy oriented or election oriented promises may take up it to some distance where investors and manufacturers will create capabilities and invest money and after that if the politicians shift away from their promises this uh, large investment and capacity created will be facing a lot of trouble that is my on ground experience i am going to feel and my thing is that until and unless that uh, contingency is respective or contingency uh, any any transition that is uh, contingent upon a government promise on a particular scheme of freebies is going to be very very problematic for the investors and the manufacturers who are going to create capacity so we have to be conservative in uh, our progress may be slow i can accept that but if you make people lose money you will not get a second generation of investors so with this two remark i will just uh, close my comments i i think i have made my points very clearly so we can discuss if i am contacted i i i can furnish more information so thank you all thank you very much yeah so th thank you professor rudradeep for uh, very valuable suggestions and all and uh, we have some questions which we have taken and any any uh, any uh, panelist want, uh, want to give the final uh, final word that uh, how uh, how does uh, uh, the especially in the electric cooking uh, the, there is the two sets of uh, job or uh, two sets of Uh, youth engagement which we are respecting that one is the high skill job which actually can go to the uh, uh, factory level power company level the device manufacturing level then the second category of job require the low skill job which can be uh, which can be managed on the ground like selling of the devices on to the actual user 
or uh, distribution network or maybe simple repair and maintenance and all so uh, so is the youth is going to have the sufficient opportunity in terms of they can able to meet their needs and all like you mentioned that it is economically viable to pick this opportunity like i heard when i was in singapore i heard this line no parents want to make their kid as a taxi driver so is this job is also going to be the dignified and economically viable for the family yeah this is the this is the open question any any panelist want to comment or maybe multiple panelists also all are welcome yeah so vimal i have a, a, a small comment on this the thick dignified is directly related to the pay package correct now uh, although you can get college freshers after the iti training i am just uh, taking a small example uh, at a, a rate of say 30 to maybe 45000 rupees per month for this service repair maintenance and disbursement but they need also the growth so now if you have a, a a company that has only and this innovations mind you that all the innovations related to this e cooking and meaningful progress is happening only through the startups so the startups who are starting just on their own will they be actually putting a lot of money on the human capital that is first question and if they uh, have to offer a large pay package will they be able to Uh, increase the number of people recruited so the the uh, the the trade off balance will be that multiple person at a low pay or a, a lesser number of people at a higher pay so uh, as you were aspiring or we are collectively aspiring a large number of people should have an adequate career so there should be actually a standardized kind of uh, uh, salary across uh, different regions Uh, which should not create any kind of uh, what should i say you it company kind of polarization that uh, this region this kind of job is actually more attractive the other kind then we will end up a lot of uh, uh, this uh, blog writers uh, or either uh, a lot of uh, device uh, distributors but not enough uh, repair and service people so the complexity of the job and the task that is interested with whether it is impacting more number of people so a blog writer may not be getting into the component fixing or the school driver tightening but the number of people they impact is not less so how to rank this kind of jobs dignity based on the pay package is going to be a challenge and then different cities living standard tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 metropolitan how do you standardize them how do you uh, sensitize this information to the startups and the employers that yeah we have this kind of uh, uh, government has to pass something state government level or the central government level but whether that will be acceptable to the startups who are independent in their innovation and, and free thinking that is a big question so a stakeholder consultation on job creation and making it dignified that what should be the pay package is going to be a major discussion if you want to make a career out of it and uh, you want to attract more talented and meaningful youth not the half timers as i was uh, discussing with uh, nitin ji while i discuss uh, this thing age group based you can pay little less salary to the young enthusiast but you have to certainly pay a larger amount for the people who gets their hand dirty uh, who are like uh, 24 plus 24 and onwards 34 region so this kind of thinking has to come up that which job is for what kind of youth so that is very very important thank you professor rudrudeep so any any other panelists like to comment okay so if there is no comment so we like to thank you our moderator shital rastogi our our panelist uh, um, dr nitin shiropher professor rudrudeep uh, and uh, uh, manju dr manju ma'am and uh, shri abhishek ji Thank, thank you, thank you all, and thank you delegates for coming. Uh, hope this is useful and you can able to make. And let us again reconnect for the next talk series on the capacity building, which is most important topic again. So thank you, thank you all, thank you. Bye. Thank you, thank you, Sai. Thank, thank you, Nitin ji. Okay.
अभिषेक जी थैंक यू शीतल भी